What's up, guys? It's Sebastian of TH1 here. We're back with more Bravely Second and Lair. Last time, we fought our first ball. And when I mentioned a few episodes back, I think two or three now, uh, when I mentioned how the moon, you can fight monsters. Well, all those monsters are balls. Okay, just heads up. This time, we're heading back to Al Compass, or Al Campus, whatever you want to call it, to uh, see what the hell we're going to do. Now again, there is a side quest open up to us right now, but there's no feasible way to get there right now. Like, I, if, it, if I get off here, I can't, unfortunately, if I just show the world map right now. Getting off here, there's no connection point. There's no connection point to get back to this area. The only places are over here, and you can't seem to go past here. Okay, we'll go... The south, you can actually go. Rain and Harina? Now that's something you don't see every day. Oh man, couldn't it have waited till we got back to El Campus? We'll be soaked. Cheer up, everyone. I'll have you know I prepared for this very occasion. Voila! Ballskin umbrellas! No need to push and shove. There's one for everyone. Did he say... Uh, Ballskin? This is kind of gross, you know. <laughs> Way to be resourceful, you. Thanks, sir. Coming from you, that means a lot. But you... Where is your own umbrella? Well, only four of them were still in good condition. But don't worry about me. I don't mind a little rain. Don't worry? H how can you tell me not to worry? Here, you. We can share. Are you sure? Mais oui. We can't have you catching cold. Here. Come closer. Uh, thank you. You. You're all red. Have you come down with a fever? Uh, no, it's nothing, really. Idia, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Don't you two look cozy? Yes, we are. So? I don't know about where you come from, but here in Luxendark, when a boy and a girl share an umbrella... <gasps> Un couple? A couple, you say? Nah. Uh... Oh, you! Your other shoulder is getting soaked! Uh, I'm fine. Really. What about you? Aren't your feet getting wet? Don't worry about me. Just try to stay dry. I promise you, I'm fine. Watch your feet, okay? Aww. <laughs> These two are really hitting it off, aren't they? Still, that umbrella is awfully small for two people. Here, you can use my... Oh, look! My umbrella's broken! Oops, my hand slipped! But you drop-kicked me! Hand, leg, what's the difference? 
And if you think I'm gonna let you under my umbrella, you've got another thing coming. You've made your bed. Now get soaked in it. Here, here. What did I do now? Can't blame a guy for trying. Can't blame a guy for trying. Wait, it's Her Holiness. My friends, I finally figured out where we are. Tell us more. The air is sweltering, and I can hear the grinding of great gears. Why, this could only be... And shine. Exactly. What happened to you, Tiz? You're soaking wet. Oh, this? It's a... Thank the heavens. Uh... For what? You're still bathing every day. I was worried the road had been hard on you. Oh, and look at you! Why, your face is all red! You mustn't stay in the hot water for too long. <sighs> we lost our connection. For being the Empire's captive, she sure seems to be in good spirits. That's good, at least. I'll say. And now we know our next destination. Ansheim isn't far from here. And with that, I must return to my studies. I can hardly wait to get back to the Spire and begin analyzing all this data. Anything I can find out about Falls, I promise you'll be the first to know. Please do, Rifa, and I'll be sure to take copious notes. This has been a most enlightening excursion, my friends. Take care, and be safe. Farewell, Rifa. Good luck in your studies. <clears throat> All right. Oh, by the way, don't bother talking to Kamizumi. He's still, he's still down. Son of a! How did I forget that? Well, now I feel like a retard. Oh, I'm sorry, I forget. That word is uh, offensive now, isn't it? I do apologize if it, if it offends anyone. Need water. Bah, they just keep coming. Go on, after her. Sir. What's he up to? The Jackal, Scourge of the Desert, and holder of the Thief Asterisk. He and his band of rogues once took orders from Eternia, but went into hiding after falling to Idia and her friends. His abrasive attitude can frighten those who do not know him. But there is something more to this diamond in the rough. By what strange trick of fate do your paths cross anew? Not that way, you old bat! Hey, that's enough! What do you think you're doing? I said watch out for the quicksand! Hey, you got something to say, you sh shrew? Wait, I know you! From before! Look, if you can't tell, I'm freaking busy here! Don't just stand there looking stupid! Lend a hand already! A hand? Uh, okay? It's finally quieting down. Ugh, about time. I need a break. This is way harder than thieving. Whew, you know, I thought you were at it again. Bullying innocent folk in the desert, I mean. But you're actually helping them and making sure they reach the oasis safely. There are so many people looking for water. I suppose that means the situation hasn't improved, huh? It was better for a while. Water was cheap, and the little people didn't have to grovel or steal just to quench their thirst. But now, the underground river channels are running dry. We lost three oases to the sands just since the beginning of the year. Could it be something happened to the gem? The gem? 
Yeah, the Wellspring Gem. If you're from the desert, you know about it. Ask anyone, even the kids. They'll tell you it's the source of all the water out here. Of course, it's probably just a fairy tale, right? Hey, stop shoving and wait your turn! Sorry, sir. Won't happen again. Wow, you're really in charge here. <laughs> yeah, well, just call me Head of Desert Security. A no-good ruffian like myself. <laughs> Moving up in the world, huh? Someone rounded up all the street urchins and gave me and my crew some honest work to do. Hey! How many times will I have to tell you, stay out of the quicksand, you stupid brat? Sorry, boss. Alavas, what a lovely story. The Wellspring Gem. I remember learning about it in one of my folklore classes. I bet there'll be tomes and other records about it back in our campus. I'll look into it the next time we're there. Oh, for Christ's sake, stop bawling and pull yourself together! So there we have it. The oases are drying up, water is running low, and the reason may lie with this wellspring gem. And back to off campus. Seriously, how the fuck did I forget that? I really feel stupid now. You? Hey, you! What do you think you're doing? I didn't expect to find you here. Is nowhere safe from your menace? Now, now. Fiore de Rosa, incorrigible lady killer and holder of the Red Mage Asterisk. Former leader of the Blood Rose Legion, his crimes against woman, nation, and good taste were laid bare by Idia and her friends. Known as Old Dread, this lascivious lech sees his romantic conquests as little more than objects to be manipulated for his own gain. By what strange trick of fate do your paths cross anew? Hey, hey, you show some respect, you hear? That's Mr. DeRosa. Huh? Mr. DeRosa? Let us find somewhere to dine, shall we? And please, don't look so scary. I won't run. It's the truth, I assure you. I was borrowing the Academy's libraries and archives, and the next thing I know, I'm part of the faculty. As an adjunct professor, you're not even an alumnus. Well, it's not as if I'm some ignorant buffoon. I've already assisted a number of my colleagues. <sighs> Ooh, I don't believe a word of it. <sighs> One more out camp of noodles! Make it a large! Ugh, oh, idiot! You're getting soup everywhere! In any case, they were most impressed by my new thesis on somnial energy. Mmm, c'est bon. So creamy and rich. Cook, seconds for me too. If that's all right. But of course, food is cheap here in the students' quarter. Dine to your heart's content. Couldn't they go easy on the red pepper? So, uh, what's somnial energy? Why, none other than the ultimate energy source. We've been trying to crack its secrets for quite some time. It doesn't pollute the air like fossil fuels. And unlike crystals, there's no danger of it running out of control. In theory, at least. Uh, once refined, it emits a fixed quantity of energy. It's easy to control, and mass production is a cinch. Again, in theory. During refining, the energy is highly unstable. The slightest error could trigger a reaction powerful enough to destroy an entire city. No explanation of somnial energy is complete without mentioning that particular point. Uh, in... in theory. So... Assuming you can generate this 
insomnial energy. What's your scheme this time? You know, of course, that nearly every war is fought over food or natural resources. But what if we could harness somnial energy? What would happen then? Imagine an everlasting source of energy, more powerful and stable than the crystals. If such a thing came to reality, why, there would be no more need for war. Mankind would know a new age of peace, one of harmony and stability undreamt of by any Templar or religious order. That sounds just peachy, but what exactly do you get out of all this? The pursuit of knowledge. My curiosity has been aroused. For over a year, I have immersed myself in my studies. The experience has changed me. I am a more thoughtful man than I once was. Um, this is skirt-chasing old Red I'm talking to, right? Do you have a fever or something? By the way, what were you two talking about earlier? It seemed awfully serious. Harnessing somnial energy isn't easy. The biggest challenge is the refining process. We need fresh water and lots of it to keep everything stable. This is a desert nation, though, and water is scarce. No doubt other realms are more fortunate, but here in our campus... Lately, I've started to lose heart. Mr. DeRosa was trying to lift my spirits. Oh, a look at the time. I'll be late for the lecture on Harina folklore. Care to join me? Sure, why not? Ah, uh, allow me. It's my treat. I don't think so. We'll pay our own way, thank you very much. You've got it covered, right you? Huh? W why me? Anyway, long story short, to develop this wonder energy, they need water. And lots of it. Quite the conundrum. So two parties need water. One to feed, well, not feed, to give people their ability to not die from thirst, and the other for potential energy that could actually still explode. And so, in a very real sense, it was the wellspring gem that allowed the Harina dynasty to grow and indeed prosper. Further illustrated in the desertification of the continent and the loss of this ancient treasure, spelling the dynasties. Oh, there's the bell. Uh, we'll pick up where we left off next time. I checked the archives and found quite a bit of information. I don't think the Wellspring Gem is just a legend. It's definitely real. Yeah, we just heard the same thing in the lecture. I can't eat another slurp. Well, maybe one more bowl. And... Make it a large. Good grief. Anyway, it seems we need to head to the western reaches of the desert. I'll mark the spot on the map. <sighs> Marina ruins. <sighs> the Prime Minister's ancestors. <sighs> 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 Now listen, if you want to be a real bandit, you gotta follow the rules. No exceptions. Right, boss. Rule number one, don't steal from anyone weaker than you. Rule number two, don't steal from anyone poorer than you. Rule number three, 
No stealing from people who are crying. Rule number four. Steal people's stuff, but not their dignity. Huh? Uh, we'll finish this later. Go on, scram! Quite the impassioned lecture. Training the next generation? Well, yeah, that's right. The desert's a, uh, a tough place. They need to learn how to survive. Well, look at you, Mr. Nice Guy. Well, shut up! What do you know? And why are you here anyway? We've been researching the Wellspring Geminal campus, and we found out some things. You did, did you? Yes. Like, for one, it almost certainly exists. See, all these historical records specifically mention it. Right. And a lot of them mention that place to the west. You know, where you had your hideout. The something... something ruins? Do you have any clues? You're asking me? We cleaned that place out pretty good. Uh, I don't, uh... Wait... Oh, yeah. Way in the back, we found a tunnel that seemed to lead further in. We looked ready to collapse, and we didn't see nothing good, so we just blocked it off. Not worth the trouble, you know? Look around the big chair in the hideout. Thieves' den. Big chair. Got it. All right. The Harina Ruins. It's been a while since we've been here. It's the same dungeon as the last time, at least to a certain extent. Um, that doesn't mean I remember it, but we'll try. The blindness thing is still here, though. If I remember it, it's still here. Yep, it's right there. Oh yes, blindness is still a fucking thing in this dungeon. Right, blue chest, I don't have the key for it. Hmm. What is it, you? Uh, it's just... Uh, Professor DeRosa and the Jackal. I could swear that I've met them before. I just can't remember when or where. Are you sure? Both of them? Maybe you ran into them when you were studying at Al Campus. I don't know about that. Jackal was busy causing trouble here. And you graduated long before DeRosa joined the faculty. Right, right. It's just so strange. Men of such noble spirit should have made a strong impression on me, so why can't I recall them more clearly? Noble spirit, eh? Well, yes. 
The Jackal selflessly helps the people of the desert, protecting them from peril, while Derosa devotes his life to seeking a new energy source that will bring lasting peace and prosperity. I mean, what could be more noble than that? You're right, but they did seem a bit rough around the edges. Yeah, and there's a good reason for that. Jackal may be head of desert security now, but back in the day, he was the leader of a notorious bandit gang. He attacked innocent people who came to the Oasis for water and stripped them of all their money. What? A bandit leader? But he's barely older than me. I know, right? But he lived on the streets and had to grow up fast. What about the guy in red? What's his story? He was even worse! He manipulated the hearts of women to bring down an entire country. I still can't believe that conniving old lech is trying to solve Lux and Dark's energy crisis. Yeah, I know that people can change, but I have a hard time buying the new versions of those two. Mais je suis impressionné. You have such interesting friends. But I'm worried there's going to be trouble if they're both seeking the same relic. Yeah, especially after what you just told us. It reminds me of the hooligans who used to lurk in the back alleys of Al Campus. <laughs> yeah, those two definitely fit the bill. Right. Just like the crooks I used to chase down in the back alleys of Eternia. You? Did those hooligans in Al Campus ever hurt you? Yes, but I always got them back. Or, well, Jan did. So this is the chair, right? There must be a button or switch or... <clears throat> something. Uh, Idia, are you sure it's smart to yank on it like that? It could be a trap. What about this sword? Ah! It moved. Look, steps! See? As soon as I saw it, I thought, I bet it's a sword. <laughs> Anyway, shall we go? Hidden Dungeon! Uh, this place is new to this, to this game anyway, but I don't remember it either. And I don't think there's any problems in here, like any special status problems. He's telling me the Amigo bot updated. I, I, I mean, I didn't fucking upgrade. So, this is the Wellspring gem. If we put it back on the dais. <laughs> what do you know? So, that's what happened. Oh, the Jackal. I see. If we put the Wellspring Gym back in its place on the dais, that should do it. It'll start producing water again, filling this chamber, then flowing through the underground channels. Yes. The oases will grow green again, and the wells of Ansheim will be replenished. Who's there? Eureka! The Wellspring Gem. The key to producing safe, stable Somnial energy. So it was worth it after all, to brave the desert sands and follow you to these ruins. 
Now, if you'd kindly hand over the gem. Give you the gem? Are you out of your mind, you red bozo? Don't you get it? The oases are dying. We gotta put the Wellspring gem back on its dais. We need do no such thing. I believe I've already explained matters to the Grand Marshal's daughter and her friends, have I not? No one's explained nothing to me! What the heck is going on? I fear the details would be beyond your comprehension. Now, run along, won't you? After you give up the gem, of course. Don't you get it? The people need water! And soon! Hmm. Very well, then. How about this? Let's have the desert dwellers move. To Florum, for example. There's more than enough water there. What? That's impossible! Impossible? I think not, my friend. With Somnial energy, everything is possible. Once we've harnessed it, people across the land will have access to riches and resources beyond anything imagined. You and your desert friends could live in the finest mansions in Florum, or anywhere you desire. It would be no exaggeration to say that all the problems of this nation would be solved in one fell swoop. Of course, there is the chance we might blow up an entire city. No risk, no reward, as they say. Are you flipping nuts? You're gonna gamble our water on something that dangerous? Why have we gotta suffer for your cockamamie scheme? For the future of Luxendark, and the future of all mankind. What if someone were to make a weapon out of this energy? Something that could kill us all? <laughs> an astute question, from an astute pupil. Worry not, I have already considered that very point. To that end, I would share the knowledge with everyone in the entire world that no nation would dare turn the power against another. A playground spat, a quarrel between neighbors, a war between nations, they are much the same. The greatest harm is always done when one side is much stronger than the other. When the balance of power is preserved, however, no one dares make the first strike. Somnial energy, the energy of our dreams, will usher us into a new era of peace everlasting. Where'd you come up with that baloney? Wait a minute. You're that yutz the chairman was talking about. Like heck if I'm gonna hand the gem over to some decrepit con artist. It stays here in the desert, where it belongs. No, the Wellspring Gem belongs to all humankind. I'll not see it wasted on sand for brains wretches clinging to a life they should have abandoned long ago. Hey, you lot, don't just stand there. Tell this madman what the deal is. We came here to bring water back to the people who need it most, right? Come on, tell him. Idiot. As daughter of the Grand Marshal, I know you will not be swayed by crude emotion. You understand that I do what I do for the future of this world. Join me and we will silence the Jackal. Oh, you want a piece of me, old man? Why, you insolent little... What should we do? We have to help the desert folk, right? We can't just let them die of thirst. And yet, this red fellow has a point as well. I know. He's trying to help people too. And what he's saying makes a lot of sense. My master once taught me something similar. He said, Conflict is sooner halted by the sight of a bloody sword at your side. Hmm. Do we protect the desert oases and fight Red Mage DeRosa? Or do we fight the bandit jackal in hopes of harnessing somnial energy? Our choices are clear, but which is the right one? So, before I actually pick, okay, I am asking my stream chat with, well, the one person that's in the stream chat, um, in the past, I've, uh, I've helped the Jackal, okay? I've also done De Rosa, but I forgot the I forgot what his was. Um...
So I'm trying to remember what it was. Because if you help Jackal, you help the people right now. However, in this game, there's a difference. Picking one locks you out of the other for a while. I honestly forgot how it works, too. So. Nope. You can't save. That's a lie, you can. I think you gotta talk to them to fight them, right? Or what's this? You dare to stand in the way of progress? Yeah, okay. See, you lock yourself out of the other asterisk, so... You choose. Obviously, if you do a new game plus, you can do the next one. It gives you an explanation of what these will do. Red Major gives you attack and defense in the early stages. It also lets you use both white and black magic, but only up to their level fours. And Thief, of course, lets you steal shit. You know, it's nice. That's more like it. Analyze the data at hand before you jump to any conclusions. So like I said, the first time I fought, I stood with Jackal. Freaking heck! You're just gonna abandon people in need? Leave them to their fate? Over my dead body! You try to take the gem from here, you're gonna be eating my steel! So I think, I've also done the other one, like I said, I just haven't remembered the thing. And according to my stream chat, or the one person in there that says it, uh, he wants to stand with DeRosa, so we're going to stand with DeRosa. So, goodbye Jackal. Cripes, and you call yourself heroes? Puh! Come on out, you goons! And here I was doing honest work for a change. I should have seen the double cross coming. The Jackal's looking out for more than himself now! And we're gonna steal back what's ours! Alright, kids, you know what to do. Some heroes, you chumps are. <sighs> the oasis must have almost run dry by now. I'm afraid so. You look busy. I take it they approved your research project? Yes, thanks to you. We're ordering the latest equipment and recruiting new students to join the research team. And Professor DeRosa is off on a globetrotting lecture tour, right? Yes, exactly. You wouldn't believe how quickly things are moving. Listen. He's explaining how the new energy will be a deterrent to war, how we're going to develop a whole new energy policy, and... and... Just shut up for a second! Huh? When DeRosa gets back, I want you to tell him something important. 
And I want you to remember this too. Your precious research is only possible because we took water away from the people in the desert. Sharing your ideals is all well and good, as is your dream to build a future without war. But never ever forget that real people are suffering in the here and now for the sake of your research, and that your dream is built on their sacrifice. Right. I won't forget. And, and I promise you, I won't give up until we succeed. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. I know the old red creep is relying on you to help make this dream a reality. And us too. We're looking forward to seeing this future of yours. There's that one. Unfortunately, however, now that we've chosen that, I believe the, uh, the oasis here is gone. Oh no, it's, it's still here. It hasn't withered away yet. And chime. Whoa, 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 what's this? A sandstorm? Ow, I think I got something in my eye. Are you all right, you? Well, this won't do. We can't even get close to the city. I hope the people inside are okay. Do you have some connection here, Idia? You bet we do. I wasn't gonna tell the story, but hey, if you insist. And I must say, it's quite a tale. You'll laugh, you'll cry. On second thought, it sounds long. Let's save it for another day. Oh, come on. Hey. Here, I'll just give you the highlights. Long story short, Anshine was a land of booming industry, powered by harnessing the force of the wind. But when we came here, the wind crystal was engulfed in darkness, and the winds had gone still. A group of shifty schemers took advantage of the situation, manipulating the people for their own profit. Together with Agnes, we awakened the crystal, got the winds blowing again, and brought the bad guys to justice. Wow, what a clear and concise explanation. You sure have a way with words, sir. What a remarkable tale. Grr, grr, grr. You just had to go and steal my spotlight. But go figure. Last time we were here, there was no wind at all. Now it's blowing so strong we can't even get in. I'll bet you peed to pancakes that that Kaiser is behind this. He's trying to keep us away from Agnes. Let's return to El Campus. If the sandstorm is magical in origin, surely someone in the Department of Sorcery will know how to dispel it. Now that sounds like a plan. Let's go. And back we go. Pardon me, might we have a moment of your time? Hmm? Five-star scholar Pudgius Bismal has no time for peasants and pudding heads. Yeah, It's that fat head who was picking on Rifa. Picking on Rifa? Me? Watch your tongue, you no-star boar! I merely deign to give the girl the opportunity to assist her superior. Good gravy. Look, Reva's a friend of mine. Couldn't you just leave her alone? And who are you to give orders to me, hmm? Are you even an Al Campus alumnus? My name is you. You, Genialja. What? Of House Genialja? And, uh, if I might be so bold as to inquire, how many stars did you have during your time here at our alma mater? I was a five-star. Same as you. I see, I see. So we are equals. <laughs> well, when I graduated, they... they added a six. No, a thousand apologies. I'll leave Reef alone. You have my word. Well, that was easy. 
Talk about a clear-cut case of classism. He sounds like a completely different person. I didn't want to have to pull rank, but if it helps out Rifa, it's worth it. Is there any other way I might be of assistance? If Pudgy Abysmal can do anything for you, simply speak the word. Now that you mention it, we have business in Ansheim, but the city's caught in a vicious sandstorm. We're looking for a way to quell the winds. Do you know anyone in El Campus who could help us? A sandstorm? Oh, why, you should speak to Professor Norzen. Professor Norzen? THE Professor Norzen? You know this professor? Of course. He's practically a legend in El Campus. They say his knowledge of all fields of magic is second to none. Gosh, if the stories are true, the professor could stop a sandstorm with a wave of his hand. That said, I've never actually spoken to him. But rumor has it, he hasn't left his office in years. Uh, if I may, I overheard my classmates saying they spotted him on campus not days ago. They saw him heading into the Arcanatorium in the Spire of Learning. Mayhaps you should pay a visit? Thank you. I think we'll do just that. You're most welcome. Yes, most welcome indeed. Professor Norzen's office should be just this way. Hold it right there. Only faculty are allowed to be on this point. Run along now. But we're here to see Professor Norzen! Hey, you! Put those six stars of yours to work! Um, I'm Eugenie Olja, El Campus alumnus. I am a, uh, six-star scholar, sir. Be that as it may, I'm sorry. I was specifically instructed not to admit anyone. Please be on your way. He's still watching us. What should we do? We'll just have to come back at night and sneak in. Out of the question! Huh? Why? If we come back after that teacher goes home, we just might be able to slip inside. D trust me, coming here at night is not a good idea. And I'm asking why? And I'll tell you why. Because it's against campus rules. Yep. No students allowed inside after sundown. Too bad, but rules are rules. What about that sign? Take care with lamps when entering the spire at night. Only you can prevent campus fires. Doesn't sound like we'd be breaking any rules. <laughs> well, there's no getting anything by you, is there, sir? So, why is sneaking in at night such a bad idea? All right, you got me. It's the seven horrors. The seven horrors of El Campus. Seven horrors? Oh, we had silly ghost stories at the Officers Academy in Eternia, too. I'm telling you, the seven horrors of El Campus are true. Mr. Bones, the skeleton in the biology lab that comes to life at night? Yeah, we had him, too. The peeping portrait, a painting of Arca Peller in the music room. Whose eyebrows move? <gasps> Not his eyes? Bloody Mori! The giant eel in the bathroom mirror! Uh... The gargantuan professor who roams the hallways in search of truant students! Fluffy! The black cat that causes bad luck when it crosses your path! I'm not feeling the horror. The disembodied voice taking role in an empty lecture hall, but never able to finish, because it's always interrupted by... Ah! Ah! Oh, don't do that, Magnolia! You scared me half to death! But I just saw a mouse! See? Look how scared we all are! Let's forget about this silly idea of sneaking in at night, okay? Okay. <sighs> now, now, this is all just superstition. Let's head out and come back after sundown. Doesn't anything scare you, sir? Well, yes, yes, it does. Losing Anya's. That scares him to death. Oh, wait, 
I might have just fucked up. He said after sundown. We're doing 50 minutes here. We we've got a little bit. We get this done in the one the episode. This light? Is someone inside? Ah! Oh, Willie the Wisp! The ghostly torch that burns endlessly inside empty offices! You! Give it a rest already! I, I can't help it. Ghost stories are my only real fear. You know? Then stop telling them! I can't even tell if you're trying to scare us or yourself! Settle down, everyone. Let's just head inside, okay? Inconceivable. But the stars, they speak to me. Um, pardon me, Professor? And yet, so many mysteries they have yet to reveal. One, two, six lights? Whatever could these be? Oh, 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 hmm. Professor! Oh, who goes there? Well, well, if it isn't you again. Wait, you're the old fortune teller from Eternia. What are you doing here, Pops? <laughs> Why would I be anywhere else? This is, after all, my own office. Your office? Your Professor Norzin? Very astute, six-star scholar, you, Genialger. You're the 23rd in our school's history, you know. What? I am Professor Norzen Horoskoff, a specialist in astrology and the arcane. In my spare time, I enjoy ballroom dancing and gardening. Well, I uh, yeah, keep that in mind. So, what were you doing in Eternia anyway? The stars spoke to me of a great calamity that would threaten our world. And so, I traveled to Eternia that I might find a way to awaken the hero, Tiz Aurier. But then the Empire struck, making it all but impossible to reach Tiz on my own. Once more, I looked to the heavens for guidance, and this time, I was able to bring four stars together. So it was you that led my friends to me who helped them wake me from my slumber. You have my thanks, Professor Norzen. Ho ho! The miracle tis Aurier in the flesh. And this is our other star. Mm-hmm. Twas a harbinger of good fortune after all. <laughs> hmm? Actually, we had a question for you, Professor. Yes, my boy? We're trying to get to the Skyhold, but a massive sandstorm is swirling around the nation of Ansheim. We can't even get close. Do you know some way to quiet the winds? Why, that I do. Hmm, most indubitably. All right. 
Oh, well, please tell us, Professor. Heed my words well, my boy. I know how to quiet the storm, because it is I who summoned it. Professor? I... I must have misheard you. It wasn't the Kaiser who caused the sandstorm, but you? Just so. With it, I will bring the Skyhold down. While guiding the four of you to the Skyhold, I was also exploring ways to vanquish the Empire on my own. After much research, Eureka! It came to me! Using the power of this crystal, I would unleash a great sandstorm! A sandstorm of such fearsome force that it would rip the Skyhold from the sky and send it crashing to the Earth, Kaiser and all! Hold it right there, Pops! What's going to happen to the people of Ansheim? Many lives will be lost, no doubt. And yet it is a risk we must take. After all, the Kaiser and the Skyhold are within my sphere of arcane influence. It would be pure folly to let him escape unscathed. For the future of Luxendark, the people of Ansheim will make the most noble of all sacrifices. Miguel Coulot! How could you? But, Professor, Pope Agnes is in the Skyhold, too. You mean to sacrifice not only the people of Ansheim, but Her Holiness as well? My boy, I wish there were no need, but the stars have spoken. This is the only way, and so I shall heed the heavens. I will bring down the Empire no matter the cost. I do not expect you to understand. I have chosen my path, and I will follow it. I see. Then we must do the same. Yes, and I think our choice is clear. We'll defend Her Holiness and the people of Ansheim. Just watch us! Oh, ho, ho Impressive resolve, boy. And yet resolve and lofty ideals are all but worthless in the hands of the weak. Do you have the strength to realize your ideals, boy? Then summon that strength and defeat me, holder of the Astrologian Asterisk! <laughs> Do you truly possess the power to overthrow the Kaiser? To save Pope Agnes and the people of Ansheim? Or are those just empty vows? I, Norzum, shall be the arbiter of your worth! Right. I am Norzum of Stars Innumerable! Professor Emeritus of Alcampus, and holder of the Astrologian Asterisk. Let your final examination begin! Uh... truly believe what you're doing is right? That the goal of defeating the Kaiser justifies this terrible sacrifice? How little you understand, my boy. Two and a half years ago, when the crystals were swallowed by darkness, I could only stand by and watch as brave men and women fought for their own beliefs, their own sense of justice. I sat here in my office, unsure as to which side to lend my strength. In doing nothing, I brought only greater tragedy. I will not repeat my mistake. This time, I will trust my own sense of justice. I will take action! I used to feel the same way. I thought nothing was more important than sticking to my own sense of justice. We fought on, and the people around us paid the price for our actions. We want to make a different choice this time. The choice not to sacrifice others for our beliefs!
All right. Astrologian asterisk. Yeah, this is a new one. <clears throat> it's a buffer. See here. It's mainly just for buffing, though. There is debuffs on it as well, but mainly just buffing. And you can see counters right back. So, you can see how it works. They favor wands. No rods. And that's the stats. Strong, my children. Professor, we beg of you, please stop the sandstorm. We'll defeat the Kaiser. There's no need for the people of Ansheim to suffer any longer. It would seem you have something to back up those words after all. <coughs> you have passed your test with flying colors. Twould seem that I was the one who lacked the courage of my convictions after all. To tell the truth, Hansheim is where I was born so many years ago. The last thing I wanted was to see my beloved home come to harm. And yet, consumed with remorse and regret, I had convinced myself that the sandstorm was the only way. Through your strength and your words, you have shown me that there is another. You children are the future. I put my trust and faith in you. We did it! But before you depart for Ansheim, there is one more task I would ask of you. A task? The compass of space and time, a storied relic of ancient Harina. I would have you recover it. Ever since the Skyhold arrived in these lands, it has been drifting to and fro, fro and to, almost as if it were searching for something. After days of pouring through the histories and nights of speaking to the stars, it came to me. The compass! The Kaiser seeks the compass! The compass? Of space and time? The compass has the power to reshape our very world. We must keep it from the Kaiser at all costs. If the tomes speak true, the compass rests in the sea caves of Harina. You must travel south, past the desert. Then east, through the forests, from the Altar of Wind. Now hurry, you must find the compass before the Kaiser. A compass? A compass? A compass, you say? Meow, there's a tail I'm glad I caught. That voice. Mew, <laughs> didn't Mew notice? Fluffy here was keeping tabbies on Mew. And Mew just happened to cough up a beaut about some compass of strays and lime. Oh, his Meowjesty will be so pleased. You're the girl we saw fishing. Minette is his Meowjesty the Kaiser's master of cats and a trained meow assassin. Cats are great, they never betray Mew. Cats are great, they leave Mew alone. Cats are great, they get by on their meow. Meow. Look out, everyone! Sick em, Fluffy! <sighs> Professor! Attaboy, Fluffy. Meow! <laughs> See? Cats everywhere are my friends. Professor! Are you okay? Professor! <sighs> this should put that sandstorm back in the litter box. I need to inform his meow -justy. I'll be back for Mew later. Ta-ta for Meow! Arla, shut. Should we go after her? Let her go. The professor needs our help. Hang in there, Pops. Here, let me see your wounds. Oh, worry not for me, my child. I have seen it in the stars. 
I am not so foolish as to misread the day of my own demise. <sighs> Mayhap this is the price I pay for putting my pride above the lives of my countrymen. No, oh, this can't... this can't be happening. Do not look so sad, my boy. This path I chose, I chose for myself. You too must follow your path, my children, for your path will lead not to pain, but to a bright future. Yes, Professor. Oh, that's the spirit, my shining stars. And as my own star dims, I ask you once more, find the compass. Whatever may come, you must keep it out of the Kaiser's hands. I understand. You can count on us, Professor. Let I do, my stars. And let the shining light of your ideals guide us to a brighter tomorrow. <sighs> With that said, we're gonna go save the game, and I will see you guys next time. I don't think it's a cutscene, right? Is it a cutscene? Don't nope. worry, Pops. We'll keep our promise. Yes, and follow through on our words. Thank you, Magnolia. And forgive me. Him? Como? Whatever for? The ball in the sky hole destroyed your home, right? It's your sworn mission to defeat it. If we hadn't stopped the Professor Sandstorm, you could have accomplished this already. You could have had your revenge. You, listen to me. My home on the moon was destroyed by that ball. This is the undeniable reality. And it is true, destroying that ball and avenging my people is my mission. Before I left the moon, my commander spoke to me. You are strong, he said, but there is only so much you can do on your own. You must find new comrades on Luxendark. New companions. Comrades who would fight at my side? Here in this strange and distant land? <laughs> who needs them, I thought. I had already decided this operation would be a lonely one. And yet, the very first person I met here offered to be my friend. I was too happy for words. From one friend followed another. Before I knew it, I had a new mission, a new calling. I want to help you. I want to fight at your side. I want to save Agnes, together. Do you understand, you? I'm one of Agnes's ball-busting Avengers, just like you. Magnolia, she's right. The four of us didn't come together just by chance. We're true companions, united by a common cause. A common cause. Yes, that describes us exactly. To bust the ball! Kick the Kaisers behind! And rescue Agnes! Together we can do it. We will do it. Let's go for the gravy, everyone! For the gravy! gravy.